it can carry several fat old journalists. This just might be the best car in the world. It's a Tesla Model S, P100D, P for performance, D for dual motors, all wheel drive. It's got a smaller motor in the front for economy and a small, uh, a larger motor at the back for performance. In ludicrous plus mode, this car will do zero to 100 in 2.7 seconds. That's supercar territory. So what do you get for your money? You get a hatchback shape. Now the Model 3 is also a hatchback shape, but it is in fact not a hatchback. This one is the full shebang. You can control all of the doors from the key or from the app on your phone or from inside the car. The wheels, these are the 21 inch optional wheels. Probably rides a little bit nicer on the 19 inch standard wheels and they're the ones I think I'd go for. There are cameras all around the car, including this one in the center pillar. There's cameras all around and sensors watching as you drive along. There's even a sneaky camera facing this way. This is the newer front of the Tesla Model S. It was upgraded a little while ago. You might see some, and I'll show footage of in a minute, with the kind of black thing that was imitating the grill of a conventionally powered car. There's no need to do that, so why bother? You can control a Tesla several ways. There's an app that's on your phone and you can see absolutely everything that your car is doing. I can see that it's parked, that it's got 195 kilometers left on the range. I can also access all of the car's functions like the roof. You may not have seen that, but it just popped in. It operates through the internet too, so I can do this from anywhere in the world. I can make it honk the horn. It does take a little while and it also vibrates my phone. I can tell it to flash the lights so that if I'm in the car park and I've lost my car, I can find it again. It's pretty cool actually. It also has a summon function, which I haven't managed to get to work yet. It is in beta at the moment, so I suppose we just have to wait and see what happens with that in due course. The car is currently locked, but as I walk up to it with the key in my pocket, it will recognize me, fold out the mirrors and pop out the door handles so I can get in. From the app or the key, I can also unlock the frunk like so. There's enough room for me to get into the front, but I am absolutely not going to. It's, I don't know, it's about 10 balloons worth. And with the boot open, there's absolutely piles of space in here. To get the rear parcel shelf, you pull it forward and push it up. There it is, it's out. And then inside, there's a further hidden cubby hole <sighs> that I can neatly get into. You can carry several fat old journalists. And putting the back seats down is as easy as reaching in, hello, hi, reaching and pulling the button, pulling the seat forward. Well, you can see that's quite a large space. This is how many balloons I managed to get in. And opening the back seat and getting into the back door is really easy. There's tons of space, but the back of the seats could be scalloped out a bit. They're, they're, they kind of bulge out a bit, but they're still five or six centimeters and my feet do go under the seats. You do notice the sculpting on the handles of the doors. It's very plain, but it looks really luxurious. But of course, the front seat for a Tesla owner is where you really want to be. It's where you can feel that acceleration and that brute force from the 520 odd kilowatts of power and the 1200 newton meters of torque. 1200, mind you, newton meters of torque. It's almost not comparable to an internal combustion engine. The, the, the force is simply impossible to describe. But here we've got our relatively simple interior. 